Hey guys, if you've been following me for a little while, um, you've probably seen this animated menu bar that we made in Figma. I've gotten a lot of questions on how to make this part here transparent, and I could not figure it out, but I have finally figured it out. And with the new local variables in Figma, we can actually change the icon color to match the background. So without further ado, let's go. I'm going to copy this pre-exact. Um, if you haven't seen the video before, you can go check it out or follow along as best you can. I'm going to steal these icons out of here. Command C, Command V. A good reference for icons is Icon Dump. That's what I use. Other people like other things, but I like that. Line these up. All right, and I'm going to recreate this uh, rectangle. So R on your keyboard for rectangle. See the shape is 725 by 140. We'll do the same thing. 725 by 140. And then move it down. All right, let's make this shape here. So first I'm gonna make a circle. O on your keyboard for circle. And that's 125. I'll install later 125 by 125. Make it black. I on your keyboard for eyedropper tool. All right, I'm gonna copy and paste, or we can just duplicate Command D. I'm gonna grab the back one and make it a little bit bigger. Save out there. Drop this color down so I can see it. And if you double click, you can click the anchor points. Moving this one over here to be parallel with the rectangle. You can move them out. And we can adjust the bottoms to make it a smooth round surface or an ugly drop, like I said before. You can play with this as much as you want. I think this looks pretty good for me. All right, I'm gonna say that looks pretty good. I'm gonna move this to the center. And then I'm gonna make this black. I'm going to subtract the shape from this one. So grabbing both of these, this ellipse and the rectangle, point up and subtract selection. Now if you get these little marks here, because it isn't fully subtracted, you can open this up and move this around. You can toggle it up so it's kind of perfect. You can still play with the anchor points of this ellipse. If you double click, sometimes it's hard. All right. There we go. Finding the edge of the circle, kind of making a nice gradient into it. Same over here. My OCD is kicking off. There we go. Much better. All right, now they don't look so jagged. All right, with our subtraction selected, we can close that up. Option Command G to turn it into a frame. And then we're gonna round the corners of our frame to 30. And make sure our clip content is on. Looks exactly like it. Now for the part that I have figured out in the subtraction, open it up, grab the rectangle. All we're going to do is stretch it out. And that's it. All right. Grab your ellipse and your frame. Option Command G to put it into a frame. And move it out of that other frame. All right, let's stick our icons on. 
We'll find it, find about center. And make sure they're not in the frame with the subtraction, but they are in the frame with the ellipse. So up here, above the ellipse, is where we want them to be. So it's frame three, all your icons, ellipse, and then the frame with the um, rectangle in it. Okay. So for frame one, we're gonna name this house. I'm gonna move my ellipse and the subtraction over. Don't click the frame, just the subtraction and the ellipse. Moving this over to the middle. Moving this icon up. That looks good. All right, option L to close my layers. Option drag down to make a new one. Same thing, grab the ellipse and the subtraction, moving it over. Move the house back down. Make sure it doesn't go into the frame though. Keep it above the circle. We'll put the flame up here. You can name this fire. You can also change the color. We'll change the color later. It won't really matter right now, but just so you know. Um, option drag. One more time, circle. And the subtraction. Over. Grab your gear, move it up. Grab your fire, move it down. Name this gear. All right, grab all of them. And we're going to make a component set. Okay, once you have your component set, let's change your icon colors. Let's just change them all to white. Perfect. All right, we're gonna start making our variables. So we're gonna go over to local variables, create a variable. We're gonna create colors. So we're gonna name this background. So VG default. And we're just gonna leave these white, okay? So blue background, yellow background, the default color is gonna be white for the icons. We're gonna create another one, another color. Call it BG active. And this is going to be the color when the colors are active. So for my blue background, we're going to change it to blue. Something like this. For a yellow background, you can change these by double clicking into them. So if these were already preset, blue background, yellow background. Switch it to yellow. All right, this is as much as we need to do in the local variables panel. Click out of here. Let's make a new frame. And I want this background to tie into that variable. So I'm gonna to go to fill, style, and if you hover over, it'll say background active. So when this menu gets on here, the active icon should show up as blue. All right, so that's tied in. Now remember, in the variables panel, we have these blue background and yellow background set up to my modes. So we have two different modes. So for frame three, the blue background, it's to the active one, but we want to set the mode to blue so that these icons know when they get into this one, it, they should become blue. So I'm going to option drag this out make a second one. We're going to change this mode here to yellow. All right. Now let's start prototyping our components so that they can interact with our frames. So we'll switch to the prototype panel. Now click on this icon here. Actually, then click design. And you can see this little trigger here. If you click on this, it'll grab all the layers within that component set. Shift E will take us back to the prototype panel. 
and we can add an interaction. We're going to say on click, change to property one is going to, so we're on the house one, so we want it to go to house. And I want it to be smart animate, gentle at 800. All right. Grabbing the fire, shift E to get out of prototype, grab all the fires, shift E to get back into it. And a quick tip, if I hit this one that already has an interaction, I can go over. When it's highlighted blue, Command C to copy. Grab all the fire, Command V to paste that interaction and it shows up for all three. So we're gonna say it's going to the fire. That's gonna add our interactions and it should stay the same, gentle at 800. Grabbing the gear, shift E. Grab all of them, shift E again, command V to paste. And we're gonna set it to the gear. All right. Now that that's done, we want to make sure that our active colors are set and our default colors are set. So, so shift click, shift command click, shift command click to grab the active ones. And then we're going to say, go to active color. We're going to grab the icons that are static. Shift command click all of the ones that are static or default, as I should say. And we're going to set these to background default. All right, I'm going to go to my assets panel and drag out my component. Now, when I drop it into the blue, it should stay blue. But when I drop it into the yellow, it should be yellow. I'm going to put two of them in there, option drag. And if I press shift spacebar, we can play our prototype. Now our space in between is transparent and our icons move depending on the frame background color. I know this was a long one, but if you guys like this video, give me a like and a comment what you think below. Thanks.